welcome back. We are in the studio for podcast 46. I'm going to say that's wrong, but you nope. said so. So I say 46. I'm All pretty right. sure at least. It's not 46, it's 47. So, yeah, welcome back. Uh, this week's episode, we're going to talk about tree stand placement. Yeah. And everybody's a little different um, in their style, and I guess we can kind of jump around and dive right into it. Um, I like to hang and hunt a lot. What I mean by hang and hunt is find a deer that I'm going to hunt and make it as simple as possible, hang a stand, and then hunt it, and then after season, pull that stand down. Right. So, so, I, have, so I have like four or five setups that I can go in, and um, most of them are muddies or hawks, so they're light, carry them in once, sweat once, and hunt them that, hunt year. Them that year, and then pull them down. So I'm targeting those deer. Um, I know like you've had spots where you got tons of stands, so you have lots of options. Yeah, like my the main part of my hunts down south on my uncles and and there are stands that have been there. Actually, the one I shot my muzzleloader buck out of this last year, it was the very first tree stand I ever bought when I lived in Iowa City. So it was 04. I think it was the fall of 04. I bought a 12-foot ladder stand from Menards. And when I quit hunting the public over by Iowa City and I started bow hunting my uncles a little bit more, probably 06, something like that, I took it over there put it up once in this tree and left it and it's been there that's oh sick that is that where we had our first double in iowa city where you had the ladder stand and i put i hung my gorilla stand on and then the lightning bolt shot through the yep killed the tree shot the tree in half yep yep Yep. just the basic cheap ladder stand and um it is so far grown into that tree that there's more in the tree than there is out of the tree you can't sit down you you can kind of sit down but you're not sitting and leaning back yeah it's it's kind of crazy how it's evolved from like when my dad started bow hunting when I first started going with him when I was like four or five he made these like hinge crotch platforms that would push down that would would, yeah that would hinge and push down had teeth went into the tree and he just stand up there Mm -hmm. with I mean no safety harness nothing I never used to wear one yeah it was for the longest time I did we, nobody wore them and they took railroad ties and hammered them into the trees and now bags. they have lightweight you know steps and sticks yep. and it's the uh si- guys that are running saddles are running yeah. like single steps that yep, they're with pulling. some wire or something to put yeah, yeah they got like paracord that goes evolution is kind of crazy when it comes to you know just from where it started from our lifetime to where it's at now the options there's there's options yes. now when back then you would build your own in a crook of a tree out of wood and hammer nails and like literally railroad yeah you, and you would either sit on the ground or you'd sit in that stand you'd, yep. you couldn't hop around um and if you did hop around you probably had a ghillie suit even way back when so yeah so that was those are your options now uh whatever you want now you find a tree and it's like i can get up there in that cedar tree i just need to cut that limb and that limb blah 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 but yeah i i Going back to present time, I, I like to find that deer and try to figure that deer out, said deer, or the biggest one I can find, and hang a set for him. Or if, you know, I got a couple ladder stands with another buddy that are really comfortable. They're big muddies, um, about fall asleep in them. Um, but I, I like to find that deer, then hang and hunt. And a couple of the stands that I use um, is the Hawk Helium. It's so lightweight. Do you, do you have one of those? I think I have two or three two of them. Or three. I got, I think, two of those that I use, but my first, and they don't make them anymore, it's the Muddy. Oh, shoot. It's got the quick attach. I want to say Vantage. Yeah, the Vantage. Or Vantage Point. I think it, the Vantage Point had the quick connectors, and the Vantage went Doesn't, away from that. Yeah. And then I have a couple bigger stands that I like to leave up. If I put them before season, I only have a couple of those. They are, I think they're, they're muddies, but they have a huge like platform. The or yeah, something like and that. they have like the footrest. Footrest. Yeah, I, that's actually what I hung yesterday at my farm. There was a, I think there was a bogo sale, and I bought four, four or six of. You know, ended up with four or six of them, and uh, I still had two in the box, so I pulled one out and and put it in there with the what a big gamer muddy the rapid rails. Yep, that go up and. 
Yeah, I, love, I love those and sticks. The re- one of the reasons I like to pull my stands after season because you know, so the cables aren't deteriorating. They stay in, and they're not in full sun. We've had some friends that have fallen out of tree stands before because the cable snapped. I watched Jesse fall like five foot, and he hit a dead branch and saved himself. Cut up, cut his arm up a little bit, but so. The older we get, the smarter we get. We're using safe lines, climbing trees with the lineman's rope, um, and we're strapping in. My favorite tree down on the river has a lineman's rope all the way to the top, so I feel safe all the way up there, all the way down. Um, it's I'm not getting any younger. <laughs> you know, I, I like the big ladder stands now. Um, I'm still doing the hanging hunt, but on the opposite side of that is the – the box blinds, which right. we each have three. We got two hawks and a muddy, um, and the blinds are nice. Yeah. It's a it's a game changer when you can put a food plot out, slip in your blind, and be comfortable and quiet and out of the elements. So you can hunt when it's raining, hunt when it's snowing, and not be cold. Turn on the heater. Yep. Is it kind of like cheating? Cheating's Compar- not cheating's not the right word. Cheating's not the right word. It's. Uh, what what I want to say it's it's, it's living the the fabulous hunter's dream I guess I don't, I don't know for lack of better words but it's it's nice it's right. it's it's comfortable it's very comfortable yeah last year I shot my deer out of it with Jace and he was sleeping in it like it's just so nice to be able to take that kid out there where before you you take a four year old hunting it was and, in a pop up blind probably. And, yeah pop up blind or sitting on the ground that's I started, I went early season with my dad when I was like four or five, and I still have pictures. And I was in these giant camo, and I sat at the base of a tree. And I got cold. and yep. So now you can go take your kids out there. They can be somewhat loud in those blinds. Yep. Um, my father-in-law, he's he goes and sits in the hawk. He'll answer his phone just talking to deer, just sitting out there eating in the food plot and have no idea he's there. Yep. So. Yep. There's, there's just so many – options and, and that is one of the nice things is putting those box blinds and because with a tree you have to find the tree before you can really do anything like a plot or you know put up a mock scrape like if there's no tree there's no point in putting it there so you, if you put those box blinds in that's your tree yep so you can go okay this is the perfect spot for a plot because of x y and z yep. you can have that box blind on the south side because predominantly most of the time in the fall and winter, it's a northerly Some wind. Some sort of north wind. Yep. yep, so you can base your plot off of where you can put your blind in the middle of a CRP field. You know, entrance exits always yep. comes into play. But with tree stands, now you can pretty much find almost any tree. Um, besides some of the locust trees, or the shag barks are kind of loud. Yeah. Um, I've, I've hung in a locust before. You just got to be careful. That's what I hung in on my farm. It was the only tree, and I didn't even think about it till probably four or five days before I set, decided to I'm going to hang a stand in here because I was going to put a blind on a tower, a short little tower with like a down and out hawk blind, um, panel blind, um, just because the footprint's about the same as the platform. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure that that locust tree is pretty big. And it's actually three of them. One goes up by itself at a bad angle, and there's two. They actually wrap around each other. So on halfway up, I'm climbing up one trunk, get halfway up there. I switch to the other for a step, and then I hang in the other one because it was straight. But it was still leaning back pretty far. But like I said, I had one of them out – one of the muddies. Outfitter. That it had the adjustable. Yep. And I I put it on the lower one, perfectly flat. Yeah, it's that's, got the screw for the seat. It's perfectly flat. That's another and, nice addition to these new stands. You can make adjust the seat angle so it's level if it's not on the uh, and the platform. Yep. And uh, I that's, mean it's, it's a I don't know what degree difference it is, but it's a yeah. If you would have, I would not have hung in that tree with an original tree stand. Because you'd be sitting. Yep. You would. I, I don't even think you could, because you would stand up and your ankles would be at such yeah, a bad angle. We had a set before. You know, back in the day where I, I'm not sure what stand it was, but you get in it and it hurts your back, your yeah. neck, because you're just sitting straight back. But yeah, today's equipment, you can do that. But try to break down like stand placement, um, kind of what you look for. Let's just say a new property. Let's just, okay. you're going into a new property. 
Um, you've never been there before. You just start running cameras. The first thing you do, I'm going to guess, is pull up a topo map. Yeah. You, I mean, and if if you're not looking at a topo map because you're just there and you're looking, you can see the difference in terrain yeah. and your – But everybody's going. got electronics. Yeah, they got a so, phone. So you can pull it up something – I mean, even I think like my maps yeah. on my phone yeah. will have a – option for that or next step up go to hunt stand where you can see the elevation changes yep and you can do the hybrid and you can see all the different stuff and you can the coolest thing on hunt stand before you go any further you can see month to month changes it's kind of blurry but you can see that transition um but yeah go ahead yeah and and basically you're you're looking for where the deer are gonna pinch like that's the easiest thing like you can have a a big field where, yep, the deer are going to eat here. You can have a spot, yep, that's the thick stuff. That's where they're going to bed. Well, they're going to go from point A to point B. Where is the most narrow spot and the easiest spot for them to get to? Because deer are lazy. Deer are the laziest creatures there are. If you mow a path, they're going to walk the path. If, if there's an access road, they're going to walk down the access road. Yep. And with that, mowing the path, I would recommend mowing a narrow path. Otherwise, if it's soup, I mean, I've seen this four, firsthand. Four feet, yeah. yeah. If you mow like a bat wing, sometimes they're like a little leery because they can jump right in cover if it's a little yeah. four foot. If it's like a 16, 18 foot, you know, big, huge tractor flowing. But yeah, you mow that four, six foot, you know, four wheeler mower, or just a regular single pull behind on a tractor, mm-hmm. and they'll just, they walk it, yep. you know. And so if you can find the natural that, whether it be, a pinch on a couple rolling knobs down and through a creek. You just look for the terrain first. At least that's what I try to yeah, do. Yeah, and so with that, going back to the maps, when you pull up these maps, whether it's it's Bing, Google Maps, Google Earth, um, Hunt Stand, and the, the other hunting app out there, you can sometimes, mo- a majority of the time, see these trails in the CRP. It's hard, to, you can't see them in the timber, but like in the CRP, yep. you can see those well, like, Okay, in the winter they're they're all funneling down to here. Well, in the fall they're probably going to do the same thing. Yep. And you can go on um, ArcGIS and put different layers on the map. You can go back to like fall, spring, summer, so you can see that transition. So yeah, maps a great way to start. And oh then yeah, especially feet, before you feet on the ground. Yep. If you're looking for a place to go, whether it's public or um, you're going to go door knocking or something like that. Now a lot of people don't understand, and this is kind of going. One step farther, if you are a public guy pounder and you're going to do all that stuff, don't just look at the public. Look at the private yeah. all around it and see while there's a you're hunting this big chunk of timber that's public, how am I going to do this? Well, then on one corner, there's a huge finger that goes into some private out and do a pristine ag field with food plots and all that stuff. Guess where the deer are bedding? And that's the this, that's this scenario last year. We went and walked a piece of public with me and my buddy and – Come to find out another friend that I knew, he had like five cell cams. Well, he was in a great spot because this landowner who you know and I know killed big deer, mm-hmm. guess what? Was on the other side of the public. It was a private with the, the blinds the and everything. And he just had that little niche and someone else walked in there. They probably thought the same thing we did. Oh, there's five cameras here. There's scrapes and tree stands. Like, I'm not going to go in and. You know, some public land hunters like, I don't care, it's public, I'm going to do what I want. But yep. without a respect, and, you know, we just, oh, okay, someone else is in there. I'm going to go do something else. So yeah. he never even hunted it, but uh, there's some big deer around there. So, right. yeah, it's look at the private. To, or the or if you're on private, look at the neighbors. Yeah. And just look at, don't just look at that 38, 20, 40 acres. Blow that expandable map up and go and look at, a mile or two because deer move all over the place you yeah, know, especially and, in certain areas and it it really varies kind of what terrain you're in yep. you could be up in northwest iowa where it's you know it's majority grassland with some with some timber funnels on the creek you know we have friends that up there they they do really good yep you, you a couple guys in fun. particular they go out of the way they do what other guys don't do you know if one guy floated in a tube across the creek or river to get to his <laughs> his stand yep. so he's his stand placement um for, for that guy is takes a stand in there finds a tree wants to get in pulls a stand down like in and out so yep. and, and, and and that's an option too i'm kind of 
I'm a hybrid, I would guess. A lot of these places that I've hunted, I've hunted for years, I know are good spots. So I have permanent stands that are there. So you go there and you check the straps and yep. check every, every everything. Every year, go in there. Add check, straps. Add the straps if you need to yep. on the sticks, on the tree stand. Get up in there, trim any new branches, yep. and look at your the, shooting lanes. The biggest factor when it comes to that is strap yourself in before you step get on the platform on the platform yep so when you're on a, a tree step you can kind of hug the tree and you know hold on to something another step so definitely use a lineman's belt but yeah, when you get on that platform hold on to something have it strapped in and give it a good you know weight yeah. bearing test yeah and what i've been doing recently is like i said that farm i hunt down south there's 20 or 30 tree stands on it and i find myself hunting fewer and fewer stands i've kind of realized yeah this looks good but it was good because there was a hot doe one time yep and you and you start and you sit there two or three years in a row and you're like i see like two or three deer like you sit at the platform stand yep and it's and there's good deer but it's not like it was 10 years ago now what is it now the neighbor could have done something to change the deer movement could have done tsi could have put a food plot somewhere could you have 500 apple trees that all the deer are going to. Yeah, you have no idea what the neighbor's doing on their piece, so don't be afraid to get out of your own way and adjust. Yep. And, and that's kind of what I've what I've done. I, I've hunted that. I didn't hunt it at all last year, but the year before I had a pretty good 6x6 six six that was consistent, and he was just smarter than me, and I never got on him. Yeah, and my big one last year, I, I kept adjusting to try to figure him out one time I went and sat with the, the ghost blind on the fence line to see if he's coming out into the beans coming through the corn because I got pictures of him an hour early before daylight or before it got dark. <clears throat> so Jason and I sat up there a couple nights, and then I ended up figuring him out, and I sat in a, a ladder stand that the landowners, yeah, he owns it. It bends like, forever. Yep, go, I mean, go ahead. Forever. Yeah, big oak tree. You know, it wasn't conducive to shoot a bow, but the muzzleloader worked out. Yep. So I adjusted based on – those hunts and then trying to key in on him and wait for that perfect wind, which came and I got lucky and yeah, it happened. So yeah, adjust, be able to have those tools at your side, whether it be lightweight sticks, lightweight stand. Um, if you, if you're a saddle hunter. Yeah. Um, and, and I mean, I always have a stand and a set of sticks in my truck with me at all times when it comes even right around August, September. Cause if I go in to like check a camera or put up a mock scrape and I'm like, oh, I need to put something here, I have it. I don't have to go, okay, well, I'll come back in two weeks and then do it. I can run up to the truck, grab my stuff, go in and hang it, trim it out, be done with it, let it sit. Yeah. And yeah. and that's something I would highly recommend, if, you know, as having. Yeah, especially in that scenario, if you go in there, try to be as minimal as you can with doing that stuff. Try to sneak in because if it's a hot scrape, you know, you hang a camera up, you might scare the deer away. But if you hang it up six foot high and kind of face it down, you can kind of get away with some of that stuff. Because I've had it where I had a hot, my best scrape, and I went and hung a ladder stand in there. Well, the ladder stand kind of sticks out. The deer start going around it and go, making a different scrape. They were still in the general area. Yeah. So you just got to be careful with those little things. You know, put your sticks on the back side of the tree. Like, there's a bunch of little things you can do um, to help benefit you and your success. Um, what other, other things you want to cover as far as yeah, placement? I mean, what I like to do at all my stands in general is have a mock scrape. We've talked about mock scrapes in the past. I think it, they're one of the most beneficial things that anybody can do anywhere. Like I know on public, you can't be breaking branches and cutting stuff down, but that doesn't mean you can't zip tie a hemp rope to a branch. Yeah, with public, it kind of gives away your spot if it's crowded. But so does your stand and so right, your cameras. Right. And yeah, it's it's uh, definitely kind of a touchy subject with that, public. That, that's a personal if you want to or don't yeah, want to. Yeah, you can also find that tree, that overhanging limb, or whether they're making fire breaks and these deer traveling up and down the fire breaks. Um, one place comes to mind where there's just – it's scrape after scrape. But, yeah, you can – and I would I would say probably ninety percent of my setups are over scrapes because it gives a deer something to come check. It also stops the deer yep. for that you know naturally, archery hunting naturally yep. stops them. And it's a spot where hey I'm going to go hit this and I'm going to go to the field. So yep. 
they sometimes go out of their way to hit those. A lot of times they do. Right. Most and, of the time it's that dark. And, and then, <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. And then, and then I guess one the one thing I have done the last couple of years with my tree stand setups, and it's more because it's on private, and now my personal farm is I stand, sticks, lifeline or safe line, bow hanger, accessory hook. I have a mount for a GoPro and a mount for my camera arm. I have one of the fourth arrow arms, and they have the brackets that mount to the tree, and I have like 20 of them. Yeah, your, your bag's pretty packed, it's too. It's packed, but that means I don't have to carry a bow hanger with me. I don't have to carry accessory hooks. I don't have to carry all those things that I just listed. I don't have to carry when I hunt. So my my pack when I hunt is way lighter. Way lighter. And I like I tend to find the one deer and I – I, I try to use different techniques to get in and out unscathed, whether it's walking in the creek, running out like a, you know, mooing or neighing like a horse, like right. yipping like a coyote, like, so I can hunt those. So I, I'll tend to bring like more straps or more hooks um, for that tree, and then I'll leave a bow hanger in there in that right. tree. So, yeah, lightweight's very nice. And there's some guys that just use saddles and like two sticks. Yep. And they can get away with it. So, Height wise, I think it varies as far as how high your tree stand is and that placement. Yeah, I mean, the one we hung yesterday was probably twelve to fourteen feet, but the undergrowth is amazing. The backdrop's really, really good. Um, I've had stands as low as five feet off the ground in cedar trees and stuff like that, where you get tucked in. Um, that one I killed my muzzleloader deer out of where I shot him was was flat across because of the way the everything lays straight across from me. Um, but I've also had stands that are 20, 30 feet. Yeah. And that, I don't care who you are. It's hard. It's harder to shoot the higher up you get. Like it's just yep. some guys don't have any problems, but there's other guys that had hey, that 12 to 14 range is probably where you guys want to be at. So yeah. it, it definitely de- varies depending on your location and, Let's say, you know, you've done this before. Your location's out on this pole of a tree. It's the only spot you can put it. Well, there's a couple of things you can do to better your odds. You can make that eagle's nest. Like yep. you, you can take cedar trees up there, break out your outline. That way you're not getting picked off by the same doe every single time. And if you are, you should probably get a doe tag. Yep. Um, so, yes, tying cedar trees up there, um, even oak limbs that, that hold their leaves yeah, longer. Pin, pin oaks. Yep, zip, zip ties, some of those. Yep. I've, I've done that, or the, like you say, eagle's nest, that stand that I have. I don't know what kind of tree it is, but every year it, when you cut a lead off, it sh- it'll grow six feet. So you can hinge cut it and lay it over and kind of make that. And a lot of times it's just, just enough to break up your legs, just yep. enough to break up your arms and – you don't look like yeah, a big before block. we knew what we were doing. We had a tree in the timber that you put some pieces of. I shot a deer out of that tree, um, pieces of like plywood down because the deer come up and look straight up in the tree. You know, if we would have had a couple of big cedar trees or something yep. to break out that outline that stayed there as permanent that the deer could walk by, like, oh, that thing's still there. Okay. Yep. Um, that would have helped. But yeah, you live and you learn. So I yeah. think there's a lot of good techniques that we use that hopefully you guys can take away from this. But like Jess said, hemp rope, mock scrape, even if you're not using hemp rope, get those out. I mean, as soon as possible. Um, you can't have too many hemp ropes. It will just the ones that aren't in the hot spots probably won't get hit that much. Right. And and you never and they change every year. We have some that are, yep, this is this is a spot we're always gonna get pictures, and they always do. But one thing with that is if you're hunting somewhere, eliminate the other scrape branches. I think that's what a lot of people don't do that. Once again, this is where you can cut stuff. If you are hunting a field edge, don't give them options to scrape. Yeah. If you have one spot at 18 yards, that's a perfect scrape, you know, mulberry bush hanging off. You put your hemp rope on it, make your mock scrape, and there's five of those, cut them off. Yep. Make sure you have permission yeah. from the landowner yep. before you do any of that. And you obviously cannot do any of that on public. And if you do, you get caught, who knows what the officer might write you yep. a ticket or um, – Yeah, so that's – Yeah, make sure you got permission. If it's your own piece, do what you will. 
But yes, that's a great. Yep. Give the great if idea. You take the options away. They those deer will hit that. Scrape. And then that one scrape will be the size of a, a hood. Yep. And so. and that that's what I've had very good success. Even just getting pictures and getting inventory. And I find out I get those random cruising bucks on there all the time. That's yeah. where I'll get them because they'll they'll hit a, a food plot or a crick line or something like that, and that's where they're cruising, and they're wanting to mar- you know they're wanting to smell the does because does also use scrapes, and they're waiting for that doe to go into heat, and then they're also seeing what bucks are around, and they're gonna go to it. Yeah, I got one spot that a doe hit the scrape. You actually made it uh, a few years ago. We put that black wild game. Sp- tiny camera I gave back to you. Oh, okay. We put it on that tree, and I, that's the the best community scrape on that farm. Okay, yeah, and yeah, And they yeah. come to that one oak tree, and they hit all the branches, yep. and I have a ladder stand and a blind, but it definitely works 100%. I mean, that's a lot of these deer come into scrapes. Um, and if you didn't shoot them off the scrape, you were able to pattern them because they were hitting Because the they were hitting them. Yeah. That big seven point I killed however many years ago, he hit that scrape. Five days in a row, and I killed them on the sixth yep. day. They smell that sweet s- scent from the doe and or other bucks, and they're territorial. So, absolutely, yeah. We're twenty seven minutes in. Uh, we got some cameras to go hang. Um, one of them is the new Revolver Pro. Um, it's a really cool camera with a lot of cool features. Um, it just came out. I think they just shipped out like, this past been, week. In the last week, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, they, I'm pretty excited. I I didn't order any yet. I I think later in the season it's going to be more beneficial for me on my couple of spots plots, yeah. on the food plots. Um, but I have some. I'm pretty excited because you can like just talking to everybody about them. You can pick your zones, and like I have an inside corner that deer come out of into the inside corner, and there's a scrape there, but there's also scrapes on both edges, and I'm like, well. How am I going to do this? And I've, I've had three cameras there. Yep. Now I can just put this, put this on a, one and put one right out there on the on the edge, and it'll. Yeah. The the coolest thing. I mean, you could do that, but is set this sucker in the middle of your plot, and if it triggers over here, it's going to take pictures, and you can also set those zones. But it'll take a panoramic picture. You can tilt your phone and you can look and see what there's deer in the back you can see what's oh, you just like swipe it yeah it's like a panoramic like you know when you take the panos okay you swipe it and it'll go all the way around so it's it's really cool and the the quality is pretty sweet i have one on that pond that you and i put up oh okay, and, uh, yeah, yeah. Th- there's doves there every day and uh quite a few deer are hitting it so i would highly recommend the revolver pro um, from stealth cam and it's probably the coolest camera out i don't know I like the flashback. I love my flashback. But this thing, you can literally see everything that's in the plot. I love my flashback because it's a flash camera. Yes. We can't do a, one of these in flash. It'd look it like a disco ball up <laughs> yeah. and just, just spinning around. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe somebody can. Yeah, maybe someday. Know. Yep, it's a cool little tool to add to the arsenal. But Let's go get that set out. Thanks for listening. Until next time. Thanks.